boys and girls, men, women, and children of all ages. <laughs> I love that. And if you had not heard that before, that is actually the intro that my good friend Kenny at Line Up For Less does. So I have to give him credit for, you know, starting that. But this is everyone's favorite jack of all trades, Tom Durbin. And before I start this video, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm actually planning on doing a video here real soon. It might be a little bit, because I'm a very slow reader. But if you guys remembered uh, the video I did a while back, it was um, my rantings about the Loud House fan art, fan whatever, you know, the fan base and their nasty incest shit and all the nasty Rule 34 type crap. Um, but, you know, I said I was trying to find a light of sunshine or something that was decent in a pile of trash. And I said I hadn't. Well, I think I might have found something that's actually worthy of being the decent thing coming out of the trash. But it's not, I'm not done reading it, so I can't give a full description of the of the piece. But when I do get it done, I will review it, and I will give you my honest opinion on it. But today, we're actually going to be talking about trains. Yes. We are going to be in this book. We will be talking about Lionel F3s. And we will be using my repair guide to be talking about Lionel's F3s. Since I don't have any of the F3s made by Lionel during the post-war era, they we're going to break the the F3 down into three categories. Okay, the first category is the 2200 series, which are single motored F3s, and I will read the description here in the book. It says the Lionel locomotives in the 2200 series are mold are modeled on the GM Motors type F3 and the F7 type diesel locomotives. They are very similar in appearance to the 2300 series, but are equipped with a single motor or generally cataloged as 027, so they can run on 027 track. Uh, all the locomotives in the series were made with the matching B units instead of having two A units like the 23, you know, the later series we'll talk about. These engines only had the A unit and the B unit. Uh, the first of the series, the 2245 Texas Special, was produced in 1954, and it had the similar mechanicals to the twin motor engine made in the year, being equipped with a horizontally mounted motor. Now, that was the only engine of the uh, 2200 series that had the horizontally mounted motor, which we'll discuss about later uh, in, the mo in the electric couplers and etc. This model is not described in this section. In the following year, the number 2245 Texas Special incorporated all the changes in design introduced into the new uh, twin motored units without any change in the number. The 2243 Santa Fe made in the same year was made with vertically mounted motor and magnetic couplers only. The number 2240 Wabash was added to the line in 56 and the 2242 New Haven in 58. All these locomotives have an operating voltage ranging from 8 to 13 volts and develop a drawbar pole of 8 to, 12, of 8 to 10 cars. And there's your schematic right there for that in series of engines. And that's basically the, uh, there's only four engines in that series. You have the 2245 Texas Special, which is the, um, the Frisco and the MKT. And there's two versions of it, the original 1954 version with the horizontal mounted motor and electric couplers and the um, later version, the 55 version, which had the vertical mounted motor and the, um, and the electric couplers, not the, not the electric couplers, but the magnetic couplers, that's it, yeah. And then you have the 2242 New Haven, the 2243 Santa Fe, and the 2240 Wabash. And this is how those sons of bitches are put together. Just basically the motor is in the rear of the unit and uh, the front truck is still your collector truck but instead of having a motor above it like in the later ones or whatever it's just a one motor thing. Now we're going to be talking about now to the 2300 series. Now the 2300 series is a very big series of engines and we've broken <laughs> 
Yeah, we've, we've, I've broken this down into two categories. Okay, the uh, first series of 2300 series locomotives, they are dual horizontal motored engines, which I will read about here. It says, the, the Lionel number 2333 twin diesel locomotive is a faithful scale model of the General Motors diesel locomotive. It consists of two A units coupled together and similar in outward appearance. The front unit, which is the 2333P, is powered by two interconnected and simultaneously operating motors controlled by one reversing E unit. Number 2333-80. The operating voltage of the locomotive is 9 to 12 volts, depending on the load. The motors are mounted on the front and rear trucks and coupled to the driving axles by means of a warming gear having a ratio of 8 to 1. The power unit also carries a rubber-mounted horn together with its controlling relay. Power for the horn is supplied by a size D flashlight cell. The rear unit, the number 2333T, is not powered and contains no controlling mechanism. The front trucks of both units are equipped with electromagnetic couplers, which operate on the remote control track section, picking up power from the front rails by the means of the sliding contact shoes. The Lionel Twin Diesel locomotives are available with either Santa Fe or New York Central marking. While both types are sold under the catalog number 2333, the service parts for the New York Central locomotive bear the 2334 distinction. Now, 1948, I believe, is when these engines were first produced, and there were two models. The 2333 Santa Fe, which is here, and the 2334 New York Central. Now, those engines were made from, you know, 48 and 49, uh, and they were made just like that. But then in 1950, 1950, that all changed. They released two new models. Same same railroads, but they changed the numbers. The 2333 Santa Fe became the 2343 Santa Fe, and the 2334 New York Central became the 2344. And the only difference is between the earlier ones to those, the newer versions from 1950 to like 1952 was when those were made, had banged attraction which means the wheels are magnetized and they stuck to the rails. Now, um, it, it wasn't until 1952, that final year, that they released a new road number, which was the, 20, the 2345 Western Pacific. And, uh, yeah, the 2345 Western Pacific, that's the, um, that's the, that's the one. And it's a very rare engine, made one year. Um, what makes that engine special is because unlike the later version, which I will explain about, that version had the, the grab irons and all the fancy detail parts like the 2333 and the 2334 did in the 43 and the 44. Now, in 1953, uh, when, they really in, when they introduced several other road numbers, or introduced them again, the uh, 2353 Santa Fe, the 2354 New York Central, and the 2355 Western Pacific, they changed several of the different cosmetic features on those engines, including changing the, the grills on top of the body shell from actual metal mesh grills to louvered. Uh, they got rid of the, um, the grab irons on the front of the noses and just a few other little cosmetic things. Uh, and finally, I think in 1956, I believe, they introduced the 2356 Southern Railway. And those engines were all basically built the same way. Actually, no, wait, 54, sorry, 54. That's when the Southern came out, not 56, sorry, 54, because that was the last year that they had the vertical, not the vertical, the horizontal motors. And this is how those suckers are put together. But in 1955, I believe it was 1955, um... 1955, I believe it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, and here's a little bit of history, because, um, the, in 1955, the 2300 series, uh, they got dual motor, they're dual motored already, but they, they got the vertical mounted motor instead of the horizontal mounted motor. And I'll read this little bit right here talking about it. Um, um, the GM F3 diesels in the 2300 series are twin motored. The A unit paired with the dummy A or B cabless unit. In some cases, the B units matching the double A units are also available separately. 
The 2300 series was introduced in 1948 with the 2333 carrying either the Santa Fe or the New York Central markings. In 1949, the New York Central model was given its own number, the 2334. These two locomotives were detailed in Section LOC 2333. In 1950, magnet traction axles were added, the brush plates were redesigned for hairpin type brush springs, and the locomotive numbers changed the 2333 and 2334. In 1952, the 2345 Western Pacific was added to the series, and minor changes were made in the design of collector rollers and the drive gears. Now, the numbers 2353, 2354, and 2355 continued the series in 1953 and 54, along with the Southern Railway. The cabs of these locomotives were altered considerably. The wire, cloth, ventilator screens, and the porthole lenses were eliminated. The method of mounting the cabs to the frame was altered. The horn components were moved from the power unit to the dummy trailing unit. In general, the 2300 series locomotives made to this point were rather similar to the original 2333. And information needed for servicing them can be provided by the reference section 2333 and to the parts listed with respect to locomotives. This section will deal with locomotives only after 1954, which is 1955. Okay, in 1955, there was a major redesign, including new power truck and vertically mounted motors and a magnetic instead of electric couplers. The horn equipment was moved back to the power unit. Locomotives made in 55 and 56 included 2363 Illinois Central, the 2367 Wabash, the 2368 BNO, and the 2378 Milwaukee, and the numbers 2373 Canadian Pacific and the 2379 Rio Grande were both made in 1957. In 1958, the 2379 was continued in uh, the new Santa Fe model. The 2383 was added. Um, the line of twin motor and single motor diesel locomotives patterned on the F3 are usually sold with a non-powered A or B unit as shown in the locomotive development chart. Both kinds of dummy units have been made in Santa Fe, New York Central, and Southern Markings. An ABA in New York Central, for instance, consists of a 2334P, 2344C, and 2334T. In general, the evolution of these trailing units followed that of corresponding power units as covered in the sections 2333 and 2300. Tenders 2353, 54, 55, and 56 carried the horn compartments. B units have neither lights nor horns and therefore do not have collector trucks. Now there is your schematic for that. The biggest difference between these and the earlier ones is the motors. They are vertically mounted, which means the end of the shaft goes into the um, into the uh, power truck, goes down into it without a bunch of gears and stuff, you know, meshing and wiring over and stuff. So, yeah, that's basically about about there is. I mean, like I said in that series, you have the 2363 New Illinois Central. Very rare. 2367 Wabash. 2368 Baltimore, Ohio, which was one year only. The 2373 Canadian Pacific is one year only, 57. The 2370 Milwaukee Road is another very rare engine. The 2379 Rio Grande, which was 57 and 58. And the 2383 Santa Fe, which actually ran the longest of all of them. So, um, yeah, and here is the. Um, the B units and the trailing unit for those. And so, yeah, uh, that's basically all there is really to talk about the F3s. I wish I actually had a set of F3s. I could show you guys one in person, but sadly I don't got one. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this little um, video about Lionel post-war F3s. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below for me, please. And as always, if you enjoy what I'm doing on the channel and you're new to the channel, Hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications to be part of the Commodore's uh, crew. And uh, until next time, this is your friend Commodore Urban saying let the track be clear ahead for you and uh, full steam ahead. And uh, God bless you. You take care now. Uh, goodbye.